You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Dominion After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Dominion After Show. Hey guys, uh, welcome this back. Town. Hey, there, it <laughs> there it is. There's a lonely town. That's right, it's the Not Dominion the After town. Show here at AfterBuzz TV. We're talking sci fi's like Dominion, and uh, I'm your host, Zach Wilson. Uh, joining me on tonight's panel, as this always, will be Yell Teagle. Hi, everybody. Liz Rishmaui. Hey, guys. And Tari Miller. Hey there. But, but joining us specially for tonight, we have, we're have we so excited to welcome to the show uh, the creator of Dominion, Vaughn Wilmot. Hey, guys. Yay. Yeah. Hey, guys. Did you just call her the Yell Teagle before? Yeah, I'm the Yell Teagle. Oh, yeah. She gets a the. In front of her. <laughs> She's I mean, the Yell Teagle. Really... I'm that Zach Wilson as opposed to the other one. I'm just Liz. <laughs> You're uh -huh. Liz. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's let's jump right into this. Was a, a really exciting episode. Like ever since I, the show has really found its feet at this point. Like for a bunch of episodes, like we've we've it's gotten off the ground running or flying. Flying. Is, is that <laughs> is really what yeah, it's doing? It's... Um, but we're really excited to talk to you. Before we get into the, the specifics of the show, I, I wanted to find out from you, how did you get your start writing for television? Um, about uh, maybe five or six years ago, I wrote a spec pilot. It was called King of Eden. And um, I sold that to 20th Century, and to 20th Century Fox, and it basically launched me. Um, so I kind of got in that way, and then the next season I sold something to FX. It was, a, I mean, to Fox. It was a pitch. I wrote, wrote that as a script, um, and then just kept developing stuff. Um, wrote an episode of Sons of Anarchy, which was a fantastic experience, and then um, sold Legion, which became Dominion. Great. Nice. Yeah, I had been uh, working in features before that, but that was really where the TV, the TV writing started. So, so with the the Eden show, it was, is the religion aspect of this? Is that something that you just has been like a theme? You know, it's interesting. Um, the King of Eden, the it was called King of Eden. It literally was not a religious show. It was just <laughs> okay. using Eden as a um, you know. Uh, but uh, I, I have I've sold I think three or four angel things, which is really weird because I never set out to be like the angel guy, but I did kind of. Um, gravitate towards that is kind of a story. I sold a feature, which was an angel thing. What the pitch I sold to Fox was an angel show, <laughs> and then this. So it was really, I guess, you know, I really, I believe that they were a new, interesting supernatural creature that um, a lot of people would dig, and uh, it's it's it seems to be true. And clearly, they do. I think that the the religious aspect in television is sort of like coming through it's like a resurgence a little bit it hasn't been so much on the air but uh, just the shows that i hosted after was resurrection leftovers yeah there's a lot of religious themes on in very popular television these days yeah um and supernatural is mm -hmm. another one similar to the way this this show's approach is just a very dark look at religion yeah and angels and all of the mythology around it yeah um so talk can you talk to us a little bit about what it was like taking a film legion that was from years ago, it wasn't like this hugely popular thing that everybody saw. But turn it, but it was almost surprising, I guess, for just from like a, a an audience point of view to see it adapted into a TV show. What was that process like? Um, Bold Films was the production company that that produced Legion, and they carved out the TV rights. And so, about two and a half years ago, they decided that rather than try and do a sequel to Legion, they were going to do it as a TV show. Um, they went out to writers, they auditioned a bunch of people, people came in and did takes. I came in, um, had a take on the material, met with the guys, and a week later met with Scott Stewart, who was the director of Legion and also the co-writer. 
um, and we all just really hit it off. We meshed um, creatively, and I got the gig. Um, and from that, I really just developed, you know, the, the Bible and the pitch. We went around town, sold it to Sci-Fi, and that's kind of where it started. But in terms of, of taking Legion and turning that into, you know, a TV show, for me, it really was a relationship between the two archangels fighting over this baby. Like, when I saw that in the movie, I thought, that's the show. And then you just jump 25 years later and you say, you know, you ask, you know, what's happened to that baby? What's he doing? He's a man now. What's going on with the archangels? And those kind of what if questions were really what were the seed for the for the show, for the TV show. Yeah, I think that you guys tell me how you you feel. That's been my favorite part. It feels like a, such an it's such an alive part of the the angel drama that's going on. The because it's sort of I guess it's characters we are familiar with outside of Legion, outside of um, Dominion. Yeah, we get we know who Michael and Gabriel and Uriel are. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and that's been a lot of fun. Um, just b with the, in terms of production, you guys shot in South Africa, yeah, right? in Cape, Cape Town. Town. What, what was that like shooting so far away from Los Angeles? It, it was, you know, I got to say, it was an amazing experience. Um, David Lancaster, who was the producer with Bold, that you know, that carved out the rights. He had done, I think, seven or eight films in Cape Town, so he was really comfortable with the crews and the locations and how to produce a show or a movie there. And um, so he really suggested it. He was the one that kind of pushed it and said we should do it there, and, and the studio and the network really came around to the idea because it doesn't look like anywhere that we've, you, we're really used to seeing, right? It's not Canada or it's not the States. It's, it has this very kind of epic... Um, mythic quality to it and the diversity of locations that you can get there right outside of Cape Town from these beautiful ocean vistas where we saw Gabriel and Michael on the cliffs mm -hmm. to these forests and these deserts like t in tonight's episode where they're out in the middle of these kind of like rocky sand dune desert like uh, locations um, it was amazing in that respect and then also the crews are really, really, you know, talented and hardworking, and they do a lot of commercials down there. A lot of the commercial work for Europe goes to Cape Town because of the year-round good weather. Um, so they're really talented, they're really experienced, and they're really hardworking, and they've just, it was a fabulous experience. I mean, it was amazing. Yeah, and so so let's jump into our talking about the actual show and like and the episode we saw tonight. Um, yeah, I know you have a question. You're dying to ask, so I'm gonna let you. <laughs> I, have, I have a handful of questions. I want to ask if you um, if the casting from Legion was approached or even invited to join Dominion, or if they would like to. Um, you know. You know, they actually. I don't think they were. I think that it was really its own new deal. I think. Um, Paul Bettany was really, really busy in movies and doing his thing. I think Kevin Durand, who played Gabriel, Gabriel he was he was really busy, and now I think he's on The Strain, right? Or he's going to be on The Strain. Kevin Durand has at least a, a small part. I don't know No, how I think much. it's actually a bigger role oh, okay. as it goes on. I, I'm not looking ahead. Spoiler. No spoilers. Yeah. I just know he's yeah, going I don't to know. I mean, I don't know what he plays, but I think he is on it. Yeah. Um, um. And uh, so I don't think, no, it really wasn't so we decided just to start from scratch and it was really one of the things that Scott Stewart and I decided was to to really focus on casting British actors because we wanted that kind of heightened um, otherworldly feel for the angels. Um, and there's something just so classy about <laughs> British accents. <Yeah. laughs> there is, right? I mean, it's just like there's something about Tom Wisdom saying those lines, right? Mm -hmm. It just... Yeah. yeah. I can't it, imagine him just like I don't know, Matt. <laughs> With a New York accent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, 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 we can't see each other anymore. Well, well you know, it's for the best. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, you know, right? so you call me, don't call me, or, you know. Are you saying <laughs> that New Yorkers are not angels in your heart, Liz? I'm from New York. I can say whatever the hell I damn well please about them. <laughs> That's, that sounds it's, like it's true. We know our vices. <laughs> um, so I just, true. I want to ask also the, um, the beginning, the stories, because they're, they're different. They're separate, Dominion and Legion, but, um, Legion, sorry, Dominion starts and God is missing. Yeah. So I want to know, and I'm going to ask it. I've been saying it since day one. Where are Satan and Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not really following a Christian um, storyline in terms of that. Okay. Um, Satan is definitely around. Um, he's a character that I think has huge potential to be explored in series. 
Um, Jesus is not a character that we will ever okay. <laughs> that we will ever <laughs> yeah. deal with or touch or approach or it's just not you know okay. it's not part of the myth. Or I just right. I needed to, I needed to get that. No, out it's there. a good yeah. question. And I, I you know it. it's. I like to think that Lucifer's like watching all this like plot is ready. Alex, mm-hmm. for this mm-hmm. moment, you know he's enjoying it, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, watching yeah. all the yeah. chaos. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Um, and I know that uh, I'm curious. And uh, Misa one at Misa one ten. Uh, asked, uh, will Raphael appear this season? And so, Raphael and just all the other angels that appear in the Bible, will we see anyone else? Could we we got to meet Uriel, yeah, as a as a woman, yeah, which was a, a great. Amazing. We thought we all really yeah. liked that. Oh, that's twist, great. That it was a woman. That's are, great. Are we going to see anyone else from the Bible? This yeah, season? you know, it was important to kind of not overwhelm the audience with too many angels, too many characters, too many. He's definitely around. Mm-hmm. Um, whether or not we're going to see him, I, I don't know. I don't I, I don't think so. Okay. I think I, that... I, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, you know, based on the whole thing before when we were talking about, uh, you know, how you got the idea for it between the stories and stuff, I had to... I, I liked it a lot, and in a way, it was like this really cool religious kind of take, and it almost a little bit remind me like of Terminator, which was awesome. You know, it's just like, because it's like 25 years into the future, the savior of the entire world. Right. Like, yes. It's just, it just I, I just had to like point that out though, because it's like one of my favorite parts about it. It's one it's of just, my favorite movies. Yeah. I mean, that whole series of movies is just like, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. So good. Um, so the, there's so much more to the backstory that we're, we're still learning. Like, um, was there was there any special care that when you went into like we have to change this we have to approach like Alex's biological father yeah we're all, I think we're all really curious about that was there do you think is there is that something that we're going to get to explore soon is that something he's curious about at all yeah you know it, just in terms of connecting into Legion is that is that what you're talking about yeah. 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 yeah we didn't we didn't worry about it we kind of just said okay Dominion a TV show is its new th- its own thing let's just you know, start there. So in terms of being beholden to anything in Legion, that's not that's not a concern in terms of yeah. starting, you know, going forward. That's good to know. I know a lot of fans have like looked like, oh, but she said this in the movie. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Mm-hmm. We're not tracking it. We're tracking it, but we're not it's not as um relevant. Yeah. It's sort of yeah. uh some people would say call it near canon. Yeah. It's like, it's, oh, I like that term. Yeah. Very <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's but not yeah. it's not show that degree. It's not <laughs> it's not the Bible, if you yeah. will. But <laughs> yeah. so, um, exactly. Um does but so uh, speaking to the character on that same question, does it does Alex care who his biological father at this point? Is I he, think he is thinks he it's cheap. And whether or not it is is something that we will definitely explore in seasons. Mm. Um but he thinks it is definitely okay. Okay, All right. interesting. Because that's yeah. another thing that from the movie, we're yeah. like, oh well, it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the movie, they made it very clear that it wasn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I have uh, <laughs> one uh, another fan question. Um, Spectral Helix L oh, at once to know who designed the blades <laughs> on the show. Um, you know, we have an unbelievably good uh, production designer and uh, prop master, both of which work together to create those swords, which are just, you know, incredible. Like, Uriel's is really cool, the yeah. whole flipping yeah, double yeah. blade. She and... also wants to know where she can get some. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're for sale. Uh, yet. Yet. <laughs> yet, right? They are, Let's hope they, they show up in stores. Yeah. Gorgeous pieces of sort of, uh, was there, did uh, Tom Wisdom and all the and all the other actors that have to have these sword fights, did they go through a lot of training? Yeah, well, Tom had actually done a ton for the 300. Um, so I think, and then I think that was like an incredibly hard boot camp. I think it was like six months of like full on sword training. Well, I mean, you can tell just by their freaking bodies. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, right. They're all like ripped the up. There was sword fighting in three hundred. Yeah, you're like, oh, I thought it was just a bunch of nude guys. Yeah, yeah, that's what I saw. Um, no, they were, you know, I mean, they really worked them out, and they. So he's already really, really talented with a sword, and yeah, actually for the pilot, he and. Chris Egan and Anton, who plays Furyad, they really did a lot of training for the for the stunts. It's impressive. It shows that, like how intricate, and I especially love when they get into the winged combat. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. It's, no, it's Zach so really fun. loves this. Yeah. <laughs> I, I yell every time. There's yeah. like two angels with their wings out fighting each other. It's yeah. fun. I I have to. Oh no, go ahead. No, I was going to say like tonight. Um, when Tom was doing those moves, you know, without his shirt on yeah. and all that. I mean, all that sword stuff. I mean, he's really, he knows how to do that. I mean, he really, 
it makes it so it's it does really heighten it. It makes it look great. Yeah, yeah. I was actually going to ask that too because we were watching that. I was like, I wonder if he has a double that does that or if no, that was actually him. No, he was him. actually doing all that rolling the blade That's around great. his shoulder. Nice. I yeah. uh, I was going to ask. Um, Whose idea was it to, I mean, because we made comments before about, like, these blades are, the wings are sharp as blades. Yeah. They are bulletproof, but apparently they are not flame retardant. Yeah. Uh, was there a specific, like, I mean, I guess we might go into the show more when we find more battles and stuff, but like, was there a specific uh, idea behind your, you know, behind it where it's like, okay, we, well, we can't make them completely impenetrable. Like, yeah. did you specifically make it so there had some sort of weaknesses like fire and such? Definitely, yeah. All right. Because you didn't, it was never the intention to make them superheroes in terms of being invulnerable or mm -hmm. unkillable or, but certainly the Archangels are a whole nother like 10 levels in terms of their resistance to almost everything. Mm -hmm. right. um, but the the higher angels, which would be like Felicia, the the, the maid or Furiad, um, they're really, really strong, but yeah, they can be... They have certain things that affect I guess them. that's something that I've been really curious about. I know um, one of our fans uh, at My Heart's Mirror wants to know, um, how does the angel hierarchy work? Who is on top? So is it is it is there truly like almost like a... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Who's on top? That got me. That got, that got me. <laughs> My head on right, yeah. right. There we go. Um, <laughs> Who's I mean, on she, top? She had, there's two, she had two questions. Who is on top and who is on top? Um, <laughs> there you go. Um, I but, know the answers. <laughs> Uh, but so the the angels, uh, like the archangels, Michael and Gabriel, are they physically more? They're, they're, they have more power. More they're very more powerful. Much so. Very much so. Yeah. And does that give them more of like a say? Because we've seen them like possess. We see Gabriel possess an eight ball. Yeah. And uh, see through the eyes. There's some sort of psychic connection. What what is it about the? How, are we going to get more into the different? Um, levels of angels because the, there's the um so many different hierarchy in the bot in like yeah yeah if you stuff. you know i did a ton of research on angels and and all of the kind of classes of angels and different kinds and it is there's tons mm -hmm. and so for the show for the mythology just certainly to start out i wanted to just simplify so it really is the lower angels they don't have bodies they possessed ours during the extermination war those are the eight balls the higher angels who would be Felicia or Roan, who was the child at the beginning. Yeah. Um, they're, they're the higher angels. Within that grouping, there's a group called the Powers, who are almost like the enforcers of the angels, and that would be Furiad, and they right. tend to be even more kind of badass. Oh, okay. And then at the top, on top, yeah. are the Archangels. <laughs> I could have told and you that. And those are, as of now, in terms of what we know exists, it's the four Archangels, Gabriel, Michael, Uriel, and, and Raphael. Um, I, sorry, can I ask why we're call, why they're called eight balls? You know, when 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 I was re brainstorming all the stuff at the beginning of the show, I looked up, you know, because in the movie they have black eyes, so mm -hmm. I thought what would be a slang term that people would just start calling these creatures. And when you, there's something called an eight ball hemorrhage, and when you get an eight ball hemorrhage, blood leaks into your eyes oh. and they become black. Oh. Oh. So it. they just called, started calling these eight balls. So then my follow up is why do Michael and Gabriel call them eight balls? Well, certainly Michael views them as like disgusting. Mm -hmm. What they've done is totally abhorrent to him. Um, so he uses our slang. To, to, to reference them, mm -hmm. and then so the other archangels when they discuss them, they know what they're talking okay. about, and you know, and also they're kind of like the bottom, yeah, the bottom level. The bottom right. They're on bottom. Yeah, they're on bottom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I wanted to ask, as far as Rona is concerned, are we? I mean, that's that's the actual angel's body, right? It's a child. Yeah. Is is there is that ever going to take? go into play later in the series with more characters where it's like actual children or is that like a special angel where it's like specifically the appearance of a child while all the other ones have adult forms yeah one of the things that i thought about it we never you know it's like within episodes you just don't want anybody standing around like giving these long speeches about exposition and telling, oh this is what this is it you know so mm -hmm. but what I was thinking about was within the higher angels, there were like types, right? So there was like infiltrators and seductresses and warriors or whatever. He would have been kind of an infiltrator. So he actually chose he that form <laughs> to, to, to be able to basically do what he does. Um, 
it's totally something to explore. There's going to be so much opportunity in a second season to really get into all the angels and even more stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, because I love that. I love building out world building and mythology, and you know, and I think the angels are fascinating. So that's definitely something we'll explore. Yeah. Awesome. I, I have one more question, then we're going to start talking about the, the actual episode okay. from tonight. Um, the 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 world of Vega, um, it's very it's set up. They they the uh, society sort of devolved into a caste system. Um, did you? And it sort of to me at least, it feels like ancient Rome. Yeah. Not just from the the fact that they're at Caesar's palace. <laughs> yeah. But, but just the whole the way the whole society is. Was that a conscious effort to like specifically make it feel like Rome? Not just because Spartacus airs after it. Well, that, yeah, right. <laughs> it's a good time. Um, yeah. General, you know, during the war, within the chaos of that war, they basically all kind of congregated in Vegas. And he made the decision to build that wall and basically close themselves off from everybody else, basically to defend themselves. And as a general, as a studier of history, he was a man that was fascinated with Rome, fascinated with Caesar, fascinated with all things Roman. And so he very much kind of implemented that system because he felt it was the best system of governance throughout history. Um, so it's not an accident. He very much created that society built on that model. And one of the things he did in terms of the caste system was that was really started to be a way to, to give everybody a job, everybody a, a way to be, contribute, to be classified. It was almost more of a military idea in terms of the levels. But over time, as things have changed and, and, and the powers that be get entrenched, the people at the top, the top again, yeah. <laughs> start kind of, you know, gobbling up the resources and the people at the bottom start getting less resources. And so the system got corrupted over time with him at the top, with David Wheel and some of these others. Um, but it really started out as just a way to survive um, and over time got corrupted. Will we get a chance to explore the other places? Definitely. So again you know it's it was so much i think for the audience to take in we had to kind of leave helena and new delphi and some of these other places for for other seasons so but yeah definitely okay great and so so before we jump into it we're going to get into stay, stick around because we're going to talk about tonight's episode at length but i want to remind you guys all that um to go onto itunes we're going to talk about itunes for a minute um it's it means so much that you guys listen to us just for us I'm sure for Vaughn that like there are so many fans out there that love this show that love listening to this after show as well and but we want to hear from you guys and it makes it makes a big difference when you go on to iTunes and what we need you to do the way you can help us is to go on to iTunes and give us a rating and a review I hope it's five stars five stars is really nice five stars is always good yeah (laughs) Um, but it doesn't just help us help fuel our egos and they do need fueling. They do. But but what it does help us is it helps raise the, the just the general water level and the, the recognizability of the AfterBuzz TV network. And it helps, like, when you give us a rating review, it helps people find us. It helps people like Vaughn find the show and come on to it. Um, it helps uh, sponsors find it. And that's what keeps the lights on at the end of the day, is those reviews help us look good to sponsors, and they can help keep the lights on here and keep these podcasts coming to you for free and we do over 70 hours of programming a week that you guys can download for free that you can watch on itunes for free and we want to keep being keep being able to do that for you so please continue to tune in you can also help us out by go on to e and watch untold featuring maria menounos a new show from our executive producer maria menounos um when does that air (laughs) Uh, well, it aired to the, just tonight at 8, but you can uh, search your local listings for uh, repeats. Yeah. All right, George R.R., yeah. let's get to the dragons. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's, let's, get, let's get into it. Um, sorry, that was great. Uh, so let's talk about, um, we were talking about eight balls before, let's talk yeah. about eight ball mom. Eight the ball mom. I called it. The bi- <laughs> I called it. She did. She called it. <laughs> for, As we were watching, we, I, I'm glad you didn't call it before. No, no. Oh. I, no, no, but like that's been her theory. I, since I the had show a, started. that was the theory since she was introduced into the episodes. Really? I was yep. like, I said it. I said I think that that's we don't know where her mom is. I think that's the mom because yeah. it makes sense. She didn't age or anything. And yeah. I said it when you came in. I said I think it's the mom. And then we sat down, we watched it, and was like, it's the mom. So, Stephen, okay, can we get some applause for her? <laughs> oh, that's a sad applause. Thanks. <laughs> well done. I hey, um, took more effort than hitting a button. So, so, <laughs> so we, um, 
we open up at least on her story if she's like sneaking out into she sneaks into vega she kills a guy i mean what do you guys think of not just the reveal but her whole she had a really good point in that like if he's gonna die if he's sick she what is she ever going to do they spent the entire episode talking about how he's sick and how he's going to die everybody from different aspects of his life yes and all i could think was how like is he going to die tomorrow are we going to lose him within the next episode because yeah. i'm not ready i was almost surprised that he didn't, he didn't kick the bucket this yeah. episode with the way they were going on about it all right i i just i i mean again i i, I knew it was right but i'm just going to say that I thought it was very, it was great how the character, her, her character that was shrouded in mystery was just like slowly unraveling throughout this entire episode. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and giving you little bits and tidbits and hints here and there, but like, it's so fascinating to me to see these eight ball creatures, which had shown some intelligence before, like they had spoken before and everything, but just to see like an actual personality of one of them pull through, and it makes you wonder how much of this being is the eight ball soul or whatever you would call it and how much of it still resonates the mother's personality like like it seems to have taken on this form that kind of like does she have the memories of the mother does she or, or it or whatever so yeah. it's, it's, it's kind of fascinating to me and I'd, I'd love your input if, if you could tease us a little bit with behind that of of if these these creatures take on some of the personality of the people that they possess yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's really interesting. I think that the, the people that live within Vega and have basically dealt with this throughout for the last 25 years or whatever, they view them as, like, lower than scum. Yeah. And that they're gone. And that the people that have been, they're gone or whatever. I don't think anybody really knows. They're not zombies. They're not they're zombies. Right. And yeah. they're intelligent <laughs> and they're functioning and they're doing all kinds of their own thing. Um I don't think anybody really knows what's left of uh, is something going on behind no, me. No. <laughs> I don't know if uh, I don't even really knows uh, exactly, but it's interesting to think about because you know, is the soul completely driven out? Is the person gone? Are they dead completely? Uh, has the it lower angel basically totally wiped them out or is there like echo mm -hmm. from the person's memories or whatever? Certainly um, Clementine is an interesting case, right? Because She's actually lived with them. She's had this affair with a man who actually was married to the woman whose body she inhabits. So it's like an interesting, you know. Yeah. And I think that's, we're going to have tons of fun with that. Yay. <laughs> I mean, I think it was interesting just in this episode because she, at the beginning of it, was saying, your daughter, your daughter. And then at the very end, whether it was a, just a trick so that they wouldn't kill her or not, she said, I have a daughter. I have a family. I have yeah. a daughter. Yeah. Hmm. So it, I guess for me, I'm like, is is that the human poking through? I I think it's more. This is what I need to say to survive. Right. I I think that there. I mean, she's been with him for God knows how many years. I mean, obviously, if you think that he's been still having this affair with her since her body was taken over, and her body is still that young when he had like hair and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I I would I would assume it's been going on long enough that maybe she could have started develop feelings again, and then knowing that the daughter was this person, like you know, grow an attachment, actually feel like it's your daughter. You know, yeah. I mean, I don't think it's just so one-sided as, oh, don't kill me. And that could be evidenced by her being in Claire's room um, with that music box. Yes. I mean, did she steal it for Claire? Yeah. And I think she did. Yes. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying I don't, you know. <laughs> Brian? Ooh, um, were you well, spoiler nobody out? Nobody you were, right? I, I, I <laughs> guess it's an interesting theory because it, it plays with the idea of what is a memory? Because if she takes over her biologically, memories are, are biological. They're planted in the brain, uh, neuron firing. So if you just put another, if you play with the idea of a soul, if you take the soul out and put another one in, those neurons are still up there. But are they yours just because you can remember them? The show is so deep. We, we, we get so deep here. Um, it's, an, it's an interesting... <laughs> what uh, is life? It is. Thing it is. About. Um, but so, but so the other another storyline that we get in this episode, Alex in training, mm -hmm. um, is what we open on in the, at the beginning, and this is what we were looking forward to. As soon as he, Alex is like, I will be the, cho I was, he's like, I will be the chosen one. I will fight for you. Train me. And so we open on him, and he is like that. not. <laughs> that was my paraphrase. No, no, <laughs> don't um, do it. But we open on him being uh, being trained, and uh, 
uh, Michael diving out of the sky, knocking his legs out from under him with his wings. The effects basically are so saying cool. like, yeah. "You don't know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Like, where's your, where's all of your training?" Um, do you guys think Alex is? It seemed to me like he was just fighting. Like he just he was he agreed to it, but he was still so angry. Yeah, it felt like um, it was it was a Zorro moment. It was the you never enter a fight in anger. Like. If you're gonna enter the fight, you have to be focused on what you're doing and not revenge. It was a nobody. Zorro? Yes, no, yes. I, I, I got you. I got you. Did um, no one see Zorro? I, I I made several Zorro references to a different show on After Buzz. So awesome. yeah. um, all of my uh, references are Star Wars, so it was like he was Anakin and he was fighting his dark side, etc. Thanks. Um, but yeah, exactly what you mean in that like. I mean, he's still dealing with Bixby. Oh, Bixby! I know. Poor Bixby. Um, oh, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we did get that moment of, like, once Alex is being for... Because he says, um, after he's refusing to listen, um, he's like, no, you have to find yourself. Like, send yeah. to yourself. Stop, stop Basically, talking. Basically, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> stop. Like, I actually wrote that in my notes. Shut up, Alex. Meditate and listen. <laughs> That's exactly what I wrote down for that scene. <laughs> and there's that moment where he literally takes half a breath. He's like, I was not hearing anything. Yeah. <laughs> so like, psychic visions, you usually have to be a little patient for, yeah. in yeah. my experience, anyway. Okay, but you don't have, like, a bunch of, like, really awesome, magical, mythical tattoos on you. So that who's you to say... <laughs> That you can I don't see. Wanna Wait, know. can we? There was a question from a fan about the tattoos, um, and it was now that he has the tattoos. How does he shower in the barracks? With the very other? carefully. Yeah. Ah. Very carefully. All right. He Never. He has does. to wait until like off times when no one's around. But like uh, like Amanda Bynes and she's all that. <laughs> there you go. I don't probably, know that movie, but yeah. they probably work. just think he's a really dirty person. Yeah, probably. Yeah. They only bathe like you know once like, every. Week or when, so. when he keeps on coming out, and then and then uh, no, uh, Noma, yeah, when, yeah. when Noma and uh, and Ethan are just like, where have you been? He's like, don't worry about it. And he looks like he's like perspiring. That's actually the wetness from the shower that he just uh, <laughs> while everybody was getting dressed. Yeah, and he has to run in. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, but so while he's do, while he's he's meditating with Michael, he gets this uh, vision of Bixby mm-hmm. telling him, don't let them hurt anyone else. Yeah. Who do you guys think them is? Well, obviously, I mean, she was killed by Wheel. I mean, I just, I think, I think it was a warning for him to be aware, just like the very first warning he got, like, don't trust people that are close to you. I think it's the same line of of, of thinking. It's, it's, there are people that are not on Gabriel's side, necessarily, that are bad. Don't let them hurt other people. I mean, it could be both ways, but I think that's specifically what she was referring to because that's who she was killed by. And she was just an innocent bystander that unfortunately witnessed something that they didn't want her to go telling the other people. So she was considered a high risk and taken care of. And I think that's basically what it was. Um, what is Sorry. happening right now? <laughs> I like when I just... Every time I, I liked her, it. Stare. I like, liked what you said. All right. It was really smart. What do you want to say? <laughs> um, uh... I actually felt like it was more of, it was less the uh, tattoos talking to him and more of his influence of what was going on in his mind. Like, because I feel like in meditative states, like, you have to have a clear mind, but him, he was so emotional at that point. Like, anything that would have happened, I feel like would have been influenced by that. True. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But... Also, um, I found it really interesting that it took so long. Like mm-hmm. he started, they started at night, and then he woke up in the morning. Um, but it seemed like such a short amount of time for him, um, which uh, is one impractical in battle. So if he ever decides to use precognition in battle, it's not going to be a thing. <laughs> what happened? Everybody's dead. <laughs> He's just going to have you to killed learn. everybody. War is over. Done. He's just going to have to learn to fight with the shadows. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, it's it's similar to dreams where you feel like you've been dreaming for hours and it was really just thirty seconds. Yeah. Right. Or yeah. vice so it's versa. The opposite of dreams is what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Yes. But so, uh, the the big thing that he has to remember is watch the shadows, not the sun, and that definitely comes back mm-hmm. with the eight ball when he it's not technically a shadow but a reflection. Yeah. Um, and it it does help him co- at least corner her. Mm-hmm. We'll right. See, and we'll see what he does. We want to talk about what we well, saw. No uh, talking about the uh, next week on. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it could also be kind of seen as a metaphor in that, like, you have to watch 
what's in the dark as opposed to what you can directly see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Trust um, your instincts. Count the shadows. The other yeah. thing that Alex is dealing with is this: this we, we get a big reveal of his relationship with Noma. Oh, thank you. Yes. I'm fine with the fact that I was so proven wrong because I thought that Noma was gay. Um, boy, was I wrong. Um, Why can't she be? Yeah. She can be bi. I'm just saying I thought she was gay. Really? Like strictly. Yeah. I think because um, we saw... Oh, because the Eureka? Yeah. yeah. And we saw there was definitely like an interest, a like, that, I could... She was like, ah, yeah, maybe. Like, I want to go to hell and hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but so I like that we got I got proven wrong and that we got a backstory yeah. about yeah. that relationship. I really hope we get more about Ethan. Yes, oh he's my great. god, he's so yeah, funny. He's, he's a klepto. He had the best. That was the best scene. Awesome. I mean, no, not the best scene, but it was my favorite scene <laughs> in like the entire just the the, the moments. Like, all right. Yeah, for anybody who's right. not, you know, yeah, listening in, I'm, I'm, I'm mocking. Liz is stealing liquor from yeah. the After Buzz studios. Um, so I much. want Ethan to be the chosen one. I know <laughs> I know the chosen one has been found. <laughs> wow. I'm just saying, I Ethan's want... Ethan's God. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my God. It all makes sense. Thanks. No, it doesn't. <laughs> That's the theory. Yeah. 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 But so we found out their backstory that they were, in fact, like, former lovers, like, right up until the time... We found out Claire was basically a rebound. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Which is so interesting to me, you know, getting toward, moving toward uh, the whole uh, engagement party and setting up for the wedding now, how they're so broken up about it. And then you found out about the Noma thing. You're like, dude, really? But, like, <laughs> uh, you know, that. but that whole scene was very... Um, uh, with them, with them uh, talking together when she's like, I decided I'm going to marry William. Um, you know, it's just... It's kind of heart wrenching in a way, but I kind of want to smack her. You know? <laughs> I mean, it's tough because like she's she, she has a tough call to make there. It's like, does she do something that she doesn't love this guy? Yeah. Does she marry him to get rights to make the world a better place for other people? Is it or is that like a high level form of prostitution? Um, by the end of this episode, I feel like she had made the decision already. Like I need to save these people and help them, and oh, I will do yeah. whatever I need to. And I love that. I love that she's saying, you know what? I'm in love with this other guy. It's not going to work out. This is what I need to do to protect my family, my father, and my people. Mm-hmm. And I love it. And Claire yeah. in this episode really took a step forward yeah, with so her much character. She, her development. She really became, she showed how much stronger she is than we've really seen. To this point, she's been te- a teacher, uh, she's uh, somebody advocating for peace, but like, unless we, last week we got a little bit of it where she like, came in and like was able to figure out that Alex needs to go in the room. He's the one she was able to, to get that yes. done. Yeah. Yet um, she, last week, I'm just going to say it, last week, even though she knew what the right thing to do was, she was like, I guess you guys are right. I'll go along with you. Yeah. But I think she's starting to grow more as a character. She's starting to make her own decisions. The whole thing with trying to ask, go to William and ask him to get blackmail from her father. And and we'll bring it up in a, in a second about, you know, uh, what David says about her mm-hmm. uh, to William when he's like, oh, well, she's she's going along. She is warming up. It's like, you're an idiot. <laughs> but, you know, but basically, you know, she is using her womanly whims, I guess you could say, and she's being smart about it. She's being incredibly tactful tactical yeah mm-hmm. i mean even uh, when we, we catch up with william he's doing his little speech at the chosen one with the little <laughs> yeah <thing. laughs> and creepo guy from like their little gabriel ceremony comes and bugs him and may the yeah. chosen one protect you yes <laughs> um and and he the, the the creepy the the guy that he initiated whose ribs he broke yeah. a couple <laughs> episodes ago he's like how can you preach this heresy and it's like Dude, he's undercover. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, bro. <laughs> and so Will grabs him and sticks it, <laughs> he like punches him in the broken rib. Yeah, yeah. basically. Um, or just like kind of like just pressures, put yeah. pressure there. Uh, and that's when we get a little bit of Claire sort of, she starts this. She knows that, because uh, Big Wheel, mm-hmm. this is what we call him on the show, is Big, Big Wheel. Big Wheel, I like you that. call him yeah. on the show. I love I, that. I think I'm going to start calling Tony that. <laughs> Big, Big Wheel. Wheel. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
But so he's he reveals to Claire that he's going to basically call for a vote of no confidence oh, yeah. in her father because he's sick, and she just is not okay with it. Oh, she, well, so well, why she, would you be? I mean, but, I mean, but not just being okay. With it, she starts to finally concoct a plan, and like she's gonna do something about it. So she goes to Will. To me, it's almost like she asked him for blackmail. That's almost like testing the waters. It's like, yeah. what can I? How far can I push now that I've agreed to marry him? How yeah. far can I push my? Husband And flashing back real quick, uh, because we are going to get more into the scene with William and David, that whole opening scene where oh, we yeah. establish, because I, I mean, that's really important to mention. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, that, I, at first, I didn't even know who was what, because, you know, you don't even see the father's face. You just don't know what the hell's going on at this point. Like, where is this? What's going on? And I feel so sad for William. Like, I know we're going to find out more about him and stuff, but just, like, you seriously hate your little tiny, tiny kid for crying because they're scary monsters about to slaughter your family, like, and you resent him for that. They're like, they're just the messed upness than the psychology that that family needed. But he oh. grew <laughs> up, he grew up to be just as whiny. <laughs> yes, I know. But I mean, at the same time, you know, just, I just feel the cruelty that a father can have that kind of resentment toward his own son for something that the son you know, really couldn't help. You know, it's a little tiny Yeah, but kid. it's like, it's almost, it's one of those things, it's like the fathers who blo who's like, the, when the wife dies in childbirth and they resent the, the child for it, it's not a logical resentment. Yes. Right. They're not like thinking like, oh, well clearly it was his fault that the people died. Tari, what do you um, want to say? Sorry, I actually interpreted it differently. Um, I, in my mind, and maybe this is just uh, me, but like, <laughs> um, I, when he was holding the hammer, I, I felt like he was trying to decide if it was worth his, him and his son living yes. beyond that point. I thought he was angry. He had this look in his face like, you son of a no, bitch. Like, well, like, no, I right, thought, because, so. I mean, now that, I, in my interpretation, it's more like he just lost his wife and his other son. Son? And, and yeah. daughter. Daughter, yes. Son and daughter. I know genders. Um, <laughs> and I said so, gingers. I was like, what? <laughs> um, and he's left with this one kid, and, I mean... I get, and I felt like it was like, should I put him out of his misery too, and maybe end it? My like that was my interpretation of it, and I guess I didn't see the anger, I just more of a um, anguish. Yeah, more of like a, the world is clearly not going to get any better. Yeah. yeah, I should do something to make right. it easy for us. But so, what do you guys think going forward? How this power struggle is going to play? Because by the end of it, um, she's essentially. She, uh, she, Big Wheel, Claire. Okay. Claire <laughs> thinks, uh, Claire gr go, breaks into Big Wheel's office and finds this, uh, the, was it, scarf of Gabriel? Um, yeah, the, uh, acolyte the scarf. Mask thing. Yeah, it's yeah. like a blindfold. It's yeah. a thing they wear around their yeah. eyes. So they're like a, it's like a prayer shawl of sorts. Yeah. Put, um, put around the face. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I don't know where you face put Face shawl. Prayer shawls. <laughs> um, and she's she doesn't think she's blackmailing. She well she is she she's blackmailing. Yeah. She, she doesn't think she's framing him. So there's now this this big divide where she basically gets him to back down with this like very she big thinks she's blackmail. right because it's, mm -hmm. it's almost like a nuclear option. Yeah. It's like if you try your, to destroy my family with your thing, I'm gonna destroy your family with this thing. And I love all the blackmail going on because uh, what's her name? The councilwoman. Becca. Becca. Yeah. The whole thing, too, where it's like, I love how it's like, Claire Claire has this on David, and David has this on Becca, and now <laughs> David knows this about William. And it's like this, this great little freaking, like, tr not even trifecta, like quadruple vector. I don't know the yeah, word for that. Which, let's real quick talk about <laughs> yeah. that before we get into predictions yes. and stuff. It's square. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> I will go back there. Or rhombus, if you will. Um, let's get into this other thing. Uh, but... Uh, so we Becca and Becca's approached by uh, Big Wheel about the she basically he knows about their orgies yeah which he's which is creepy so, which he clearly does not understand no I just want that out there because <laughs> um, she and she's he, he he knew we knew that he knew about her sleeping with Michael yes we didn't know that he knew about the whole orgy thing yeah okay um, and so now Becca's like she's getting ready to ship out. The Orgy Girls to Helena. The Orgy, orgy the, Girls. The Four Cherries. <laughs> That's my new band that. name. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I like the Four Cherries. That's yeah. <laughs> four cher <laughs> Makes them sound like, like a group. Old bait. Yeah. 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 It's like Josie and the Pussycats. The Four like Cherries. The temptations. Temptations, yeah. Um, <laughs> and I'm very curious what that's going to mean. And we can talk about it more in predictions. Oh. Mm. Dun, dun, dun. oh 
shifting over. And now, you're after Buzz TV. And this is where I get seizures. Predictions. Predictions, predictions. <laughs> um, but so, let's talk about, what, I mean, what do you guys think that, there's so many things building in this episode. Yeah. What do you guys think we're, we've got coming up the coming... Well, I mean, uh, not, it, not just next week, but over the next four episodes. I mean, well, for next week's episode, we see a little bit about, you know, more development behind, uh, you know, uh, Claire's eight ball mother. Mm-hmm. And apparently at one point, it seems like she loses whatever sense of humanity she has. And she just goes like into like, rah, 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 like mode in one point. That's what I call it. Rah, rah, rah. <laughs> I just have to figure out how to spell it. Um, and I mean, just in general, I mean, I really I'm interested to see where that goes as far as this eight ball mother how she'll connect with claire if claire will find out when's the dad gonna croak um uh general right uh, Re- and i just i'm really looking forward to seeing again i'm looking forward i really want to see how the hell william wound up on gabriel's side like how how where did he meet him how did that develop why does will is william so willing to follow him what does he think he's offering him in humanity? Because I don't think William wants all of humanity wiped out. No, but I think what maybe he's getting from Gabriel, and probably Gabriel knows that he's giving this, is he's a... He's got daddy a, issues. A, yeah, uh, he's obviously. giving him a father figure who approves. Yeah. 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 Which he's definitely not getting at home. Yeah, and obviously, you know, seeing Michael's uh, lack of being able to connect with freaking Becca, we know he's probably not going to be the fatherly <laughs> figure, so... <laughs> I'm sorry, what do you, what do you think's um, coming up? I'm uh I'm actually really looking forward to the confrontation between David and William now that we oh. suppose that he knows that he's yeah. an acolyte. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um so that should be really fun. Like I had I think I had made one prediction about uh Big Wheel dying and I think this would be the moment if it were to happen. Mm. Oh, he would kill his father. Yes. Oh my god. Kill your yes. father. <laughs> Big Wheel. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, what are you what are you um, thinking? I think that um Alan Dale doesn't stick around shows very long, and so <laughs> is he known for that? Uh, yes. Um, so I don't think right, uh, General Rison's sticking around that long. No, he probably doesn't have a few more episodes. I think you're no. right on that. Yeah. Wow. We and could I, see we could see both fathers going yeah. down. There's already no mothers around, like at least not a full mother. Right. And says, I like, think uh, I think the orgies one. are sadly over, and I'm disappointed. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Won't you bring him back? Yeah, please. <laughs> uh, well, guys, that's gonna do it. For for uh, the, this episode of the Dominion, this has been uh, this was 105 something borrowed. Um, I want to thank again uh, Vaughn Wilmot Yay. for coming Yay. in to, to talk thank with us. You. Vaughn, uh, where can the people find you? I know you guys are going to be at Comic Con. Yeah, we're going to be at Comic Con at 530 on Friday. Yeah, great, That's awesome. The, the time of our panel. And you guys can check the uh, the schedule if you're going to be down in San Diego. You can also come say hi to a few of us. We'll yeah, be down we'll be there. there. Um, and to find out exactly what room it's going to be in, where can they yeah. find you if they want to find you on Twitter? Um, at Vaughn Wilmot. So awesome. at my name, basically. Okay. Awesome. Great. Great. Uh, Tari Miller, where can the people find you online? You can find me on Twitter at Tari J. That's T A U R I J A Y. You can also catch me on the Extant panel on Wednesdays and the Sword Art Online on Sundays. Liz? Yeah. Oh, thanks. I'm just waiting for you. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, my, uh, it's Liz. You can catch me on Twitter at Lizzie Maui and Instagram at L-I-Z-Z-Y-M-A-W-Y. You can also find me on Sword Art Online. You can find me on The Musketeers. Uh, and you can also find me uh, soon. Actually, aren't you going to be out oh, on The Legend of yes. Korra? Yeah. What? Yell to you. You can find me online at yell.tv. There you'll find awesome information about the beautiful stylings from Siren's Boudoir. You can also find me on Twitter at Yell Teagle. That's Y A E L T Y G I E L. Take it away, Zach. Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter at that Zach Wilson, T H A T Z A C H W I L S O N. And also here at After Buzz on uh, The Leftovers, The Strain, and MasterChef. Uh, I'm Zach Wilson, and thanks for geeking out with us. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz see you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.
Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows yeah. and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.